Canon announced the 1DX at the end of 2011, but there was a long delay in it getting out. It's finally out, it tore up the London Olympics, and today I have one to test out. Now, on paper, the 1DX edges out, or at least equals, the Nikon D4 in pretty much every category. Okay, so there they are side by side. Both of these full frame speed demons offer 100% frame coverage, absolute rock solid build quality. Their shutter speed, they'll go from a full 30 seconds down to 1 8,000th of a second, and they both have the latest generation processors. But there's a number of ways that the Canon is actually well ahead on paper. First off, the Nikon has 16.2 megapixel, whereas the Canon has 18.1. A big advantage in my opinion, the Canon offers small and medium RAW modes, which the Nikon just doesn't have. Um, the Nikon has 51 autofocus points, whereas the Canon has 61, and a whole load of them are cross-type, but they only go up to f5.6, so that's a problem for you if you're shooting at anything with a maximum aperture slower than that, like if you're using a long lens and a teleconverter. And whilst there's a megapixel war going on in certain segments of the market, there's always a speed war going on. And whilst the D4 is no slouch at 10 frames a second with full autofocus, the 1DX will do 12. And when you lock up the autofocus, Nikon steps up to 11, whereas a Canon goes all the way to 14. That even makes a Spinal Tap amplifier jealous. There's a couple of ways that the Nikon is ahead though. It offers five stops plus and minus exposure comp, whilst the Canon only has three. And Nikon's 10% cheaper, which, you know, still adds up. Taking a look at the back of them, obviously they both offer fully reinforced and high quality screens. The D4 has the option of putting an, an additional plastic cover over it, whereas the Canon doesn't have that. Uh, they both offer dual memory cards. So far, the D4 is the only camera in the world to be rocking the XQD format, which has great potential, but there's not many manufacturers yet, and they have a high-speed compact flash, whereas the Canon has two high-speed compact flash cards. The Canon LCD resolution is higher than the on the Nikon, but both of them have intuitive layouts, and whichever brand you're with, you're going to find it really easy to navigate. And both of these are really well set up for video now. They both have uh, headphone ports and microphone inputs, which is really important. And they both have full audio levels on the video. And they've both got great connectivity now, offering Ethernet as well as Wi-Fi via an optional attachment. But to be perfectly honest, I think you knew all of that already. There's been so much said about these two cameras, and of course, you can't help but there be comparisons drawn between the two as the new high-speed flagships of their respective companies. But there's really a couple of different categories of people who would be, you know, looking at and interested in these. One is working professionals. Now, if you've been with a brand for a long time, you've got a load of gear, you're all set up using Nikon or Canon or whichever other brand you're with, it's a really big jump to change bodies completely because of a new generation of cameras coming out and then going and changing your whole system. Both of the cameras are astounding. Obviously, I have a longer history with Nikon, but I absolutely love and respect the stuff that Canon's putting out. And this camera is an absolute monster. I've been shooting with it all day, and the speed is phenomenal, like nothing I've ever used before. Are you freaking kidding me, right? And, you know, it is more expensive. It's about 10% more than the D4. Um, the build quality, as I said, is just gorgeous. The ergonomics of it are fantastic. Like the Nikon, you can basically hold it with a finger. It's so well balanced. It's just, it's a joy to shoot with. If you're a professional and you're working full time and you need the best, you need absolute rock solid reliability, you need absolute speed, then it's hard to go past the 1DX. It's an amazing, phenomenal, beautiful camera. And if I was shooting Canon professionally, no doubt I would have gone to this. It's a big jump over the previous 1D. But for the rest of the audience out there, it's a bit of camera porn, let's face it. It's a big, expensive piece of play equipment. It's like looking at a Lamborghini or a Bugatti Veyron. It's, you know, a pinnacle of engineering design. It's a beautiful piece of equipment. It's something to lust after and wish that you could own. And there's nothing wrong with that because if you happen to be, you know, a really passionate enthusiast or someone with a lot of money or someone who likes expensive toys, 
then sure, go ahead, you're not gonna regret this. If you're a professional, then you probably already know if this is gonna meet your requirements or not. It is an absolute monster of a machine and you get what you pay for. Like anything in life, you're paying double of what you're paying for the 5D Mark III because it is a huge leap in build quality. The image quality is just astounding. And you know, to be able to engineer a camera to do 14 frames a second, whether it's auto-focusing or not, is an amazing, marvelous achievement. Just think of all the parts that have to move and be good to do it for hundreds of thousands of times without fault, because these things can't break down in the middle of a big sporting event. So what does 12 FPS actually sound like? Here I've slowed it down to 25% of the original speed. Here it is at 10% speed. It's, it's remarkable and it's just a beautiful machine. I've had such fun playing with it today and I have to say the tracking capabilities of this are a big leap over the 1D. In my opinion, the previous 1D was a little bit behind the Nikon D3S in terms of its high speed tracking. The D4, I don't think, is really much of an upgrade in that regard to the D3S. In fact, I find that I get probably slightly more out of focus shots when I'm tracking. But the tracking on this one is a big leap and I think it's clearly a bit of a step ahead of the Nikon D4. I've only been testing this one out with the uh, 24-70 2.8 previous and current generation, but the autofocus is just amazing. It pulls focus like as fast as any camera I've ever used, you know, bar none. It's just remarkable. So if you're seriously considering the 1DX, whether for purely professional reasons or just because you want to take it out and play in the park, you won't be disappointed. It's a supremely well-built, beautifully engineered, just a wonderful, wonderful machine to work with. And it is a notable improvement over the previous 1D series. I would say there is a, a justification to upgrade from that to this one if you've got the budget. As I said, in comparison to the Nikon D4, it matches or exceeds in almost every measurable category on paper. And having used this for the day, I can say I'm really, really impressed on how it delivers on that. Being the flagship camera, you would certainly expect that everything's gonna be popping and locking and you know firing on all cylinders. And this certainly is. And I love the machine gun fire. That said, I don't know whether the difference is big enough that it would justify anyone completely switching brands, but I tell you what, I would absolutely love to add one of these in my bag. Beautiful, beautiful machine. Hope that helps. Please click the subscribe. There's more videos coming and I'll see you soon.